meetings in order at 5.03 p.m. on March 27th, 2024. Was there proof of notification? Yes, it was properly notified. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve a 13 point agenda. So moved. Motion by Gary Manning, seconded by Scott. John Collins. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Carries. We got approval from February 28th minutes. Is there any additions or corrections to those minutes? I'd like to make a motion for approval. Motion to approve minutes. Motion by John Collins, seconded by Second. Eric Stevenando. Any further discussion on those minutes? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Number five, public input. Public input. Number six, financial reports. So in the, our packet. Those are all in your packet. Nothing has changed from last month. There was no major expenditures or anything like that, just sort of utilities and whatnot. Yeah. Any discussion on the financial reports? We're all good. Okay. Uh, bike trail opening agenda item number seven. Bike trail will remain closed till further notice. We did it. We're able to go through the budget to identify a good chunk of change. So the brushing is pretty much done on that. We backed that piece of equipment out of there. We still got a little bit of cleanup for the brushing side of it, but not much. And then we're going to start by putting all new screenings material down on the road. So with the funding we have available, we could be looking at over. 100 plus loads of fresh material being applied to that rolled out and properly graded as well. What is, so, what is the section that you did work on? And what from the rise of the work? So the work took place from the Richland Center at the old intersection just right behind Walmart there, and it goes as far as Henpack south to Gotham. So, and that's the stretch that we've been primarily working on with that much gravel or screens that we're bringing in. We may be able to extend even farther past that point to some of those really slumped, uh, muddy areas that needed some more materials, so we may be able to add some there. And of course, if we can add some break ground stuff first to improve the base underneath, we're going to do that. So, what about the yeah, well, that fence line is past? There's a fence line that's past Henpeck, but you went up to Henpeck. I was thinking that got brushed out along that fence line. So we did actually, there is a fence line that's right close to the trail. We did take the lunch that through there and clear a lot of that brush from that fence line. I mean, there's a lot of stumps and stuff left over because, of course, it grew up through the fence, but we knocked a lot yeah. of that brush and stuff. Is there's some through like Twin Bluffs, like just beyond Twin Bluffs, mm -hmm. that fence there, because I know when they ran the new sewer line, they did a lot of work yeah. on the trail, putting the screens through that area. So you're getting the screenings right here at Town Johnny? Correct. We actually were able to get it. Uh, sounds like a couple dollar discount per ton for all of our milestone. Anybody else got any more discussion on the bike trail opening? Um, has any information been put either um, online or on? I don't know if there is still a, even a uh, Facebook page for it was on, uh, recreation. It was put on Facebook and it was also done in WRC to notify the closure. Okay. What what um Facebook the page county specific county. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Number eight, we got bids for Shriver and mobile sites. That would be the snowmobile grave where they were working on the rip wrapping on the banks to kind of protect the trail. And one site was behind Travers, which was on private property, I think. And then the other mobile site would be on city owned property, uh, just past the footbridge heading towards mobile. Correct. So the last bit came in today at, uh, I don't think it was actually kind, kind staff, but it, it came in today right about noon or so. Uh, three competitive bids all together at handed. One set to him, one set to him, and then I have a set. So we'll just kind of open them up and then see where we go at. I want to make one comment about that. I love the way this is done, Josh. This is the way all of them should be done sealed, uh, given, open, and public. This is the way I think all of our bids should be. Which one do you want to open first? What's that? Which one do you want to open? Josh is going first. Take me a while to rip this up. 
All open both of them. All right. You got it. So the uh, first bid right. opening is to one less construction. This is for the Schreiber site. His uh, grand total for that comes to fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety three dollars and forty cents. $15,903.45. And he also provided a proof of insurance as well. $15,993.40, again, for the Schreiber site. Mobile site comes to $16,000. Four hundred ninety-seven dollars. Again, by Wanless. By Wanless. Fifteen thousand. Sixteen thousand four ninety-seven. Four ninety-seven. Yes. Here, I'm still trying to figure out how they got this. Okay, so what you're looking at here is that their insurance form. So that's what you want to be looking, I'm looking for. Schreiber's who will move that. Look, Schreiber's right here. And who is that from? This bid, the second bids will be brought uh, by WS Trucking and Construction from Caledonia, Minnesota. For the Schreiber site from WS Trucking. They come in at $48,304.85. Again, $48,304.85. In the mobile site, $45,002.50. Mark, how much was that? The city property one? $16,000. $16,000? For the no, for WS, right? 25,000. Where did you see that from? The Technomobile Caledonia. for the, the same company. <laughs> <laughs> I know who the follow right? $2. Okay, uh, for the mobile site, again, from WS Trucking came to $45,002.50. Did, did they also send their proof of insurance? They did. Okay. <laughs> All right. Third one is Mike Lefty excavating on the reach account. This is for the Schreiber site. It's $28,480. Okay. Next one from Mike Webb can be excavating on the Leeds Town mobile site $25,720. Um, Plus proof of insurance. Yeah, that's what we need to do. So, seeing the three bids, my recommendation would be Wanless. I'll make a motion to accept Wanless for both the mobile and the fiber site. Okay. Yeah, a motion on the floor to accept the bids from Wanless excavating for uh, snowmobile trail rip wrapping that's behind Shrivers and um, on the city property at the Old Mill Pond. Past the footbridge, and have they since they were opened in public? They've been reviewed, and John has selected uh, Wanless and got seconded by Scott Gall. Is there any further discussion? Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Or say nay. Motion carries. Now, a couple of things I guess I want to I, I 
go along with this rip wrapping is um, I think recently there was a land purchase that is a long trail that these two sites um, getting work done on and the rip wrapping that would probably need to be done with that so the landowner should be contacted along there and also the county should probably look at you know the future of maybe securing some easements at some point noted because there's some there might be some significant change happening with land ownership so but a lot of this stuff is you know we spend all this money on this and if the trail gets shut down then we just wasted that money so um, technically not the county's money that's being spent or taxpayer dollars. This comes off of the Stonewall grant, just so you know. And that Stonewall grant zero taxpayer dollars, and it's, right? Is that oh, you zero taxpayer that? dollars? That comes from the DNR and a separate grant. Other than the maintenance, the standard yep. yield maintenance grant is a separate grant. Oh. I know attorney once you've done that, I should not be bidding on that, but I'm still not certain if, if it uh, seems it's DNR money. Why that I, I couldn't, I talked to Carrie about it. Uh, uh, told me that it goes to the county so that money would come. The check would be made out from the county then. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So that's why I can't bid on it. Yeah, but it's the funding that, to use that is paid through that segregated account that the DNR has, which is comprised of the snowmobile registration dollars, your, your trail pass dollars for snowmobile use only, registration for snowmobile use only, and then uh, your excise on gas for recreational gasoline. You know, there's a multiplier that they use, 55 cents per 50 gallons for 200 and some thousand registered snowmobiles in the state. 100% correct. The, the one stipulation that I think you would have to talk to Attorney Wendell about is that the original check would be paid for by Richland County taxpayer dollars oh. first, oh. and then it's submitted for reimbursement for that grant. So you're still using taxpayer money to make well, that. that makes sense. Yeah. Because I, got, I was going to bid them both a thousand and geez, I just weren't fired. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're done with number agenda and number eight. We got storage removal at the fairgrounds April 20th. Correct. Everything that is currently being housed at the fairgrounds, uh, as far as the campers and boats and cars and so on and so forth, letters have been sent out as of it was either beginning of this week or last week. But that letters have been sent to all people who had their stuff stored there, notifying that April 20th is the removal date for their stuff. I'll be bringing in a small crew of guys, probably three or four plus myself. And to be out there, and then our new uh, pair uh, coordinator, Lyric, will be on site too. We are going to just come in really early, start removing everything from the buildings, and then people can come and hook up to their stuff and leave. We will do all the removal from the, build, from the buildings for them using their own equipment. So, and then they'll have that one day to get their stuff out of there. Mr. Chair. Any discussion? Has anybody been in there since? I know last year we lost the. Uh, I have been in there several times checking on door locks and things of that nature. I have not noticed anything out of place. Well, it's, it's, that I see when I'm walking through. Seeing on agenda item number nine. Number 10 is sponsors for the fair. Uh, so, A, we need update packages. Sandy, I'll hand that one off to you. I think you've been in communications to Lyrica about that. Yeah, she wanted to know how do we go about doing that. And I said, well, I know that you guys have done some of the contacting, um, but I think, did the letters go out too as well? Letters have went out on that, yes. Okay, I think that's how they usually do it. What do you mean by packages? Right there, Sandy, I can put on the screen. Oh, sure. but up there, that gives you the, like, you know okay. the different levels. Oh, what the the explanation? Yes, yes the yes. explanation. Yeah, like that. They haven't been updated since 2016. Correct. So there's a lot of multiple fears. I got uh, Green County's on my phone here. I took pictures of. Um, 
they there's I mean a lot of fears um, have higher dollar amounts than what our platinum sponsor is. So they offer a little bit more in the package deal. So it's certainly in our purview if the county is this well, whatever. But the county's got the purview to change them if they want to since they have over the player. So what they want in their packages. I'd certainly say we could give it a shot to increase stuff, but we have to have a longer discussion to talk about what we want included in those packages, what we're looking for in those partnerships or sponsorships. And, or maybe we say that this is, these are good. My opinion is you get too high that you might scare a lot of people away and all these sponsors around here, like Jones's Olson, they're all the same people that sponsor 90% of our activities that go on in Richmond Center. So uh, that's just my opinion. I think that you don't want to get too high. May I ask a question? Yeah. So with those prices and uh, things on there, understanding the fact that prices and stuff have went up, and that's basically what you want to look at changing on there for your sponsorships to be able to compensate for the current standards. So would I make a recommendation of looking at the basically price increases like on sales or parts or whatever that you've had in 2016 to the current year of 2024 and maybe using that percentage to look at the update of those sponsorship packages. That was 2020. Yeah. I know there's one from last year. You know, we've done it every year. So it's so. like they have been. Yeah, there's there's a current, I mean, we send them out every year. So. I, but it's, you know, I mean, we get the same sponsors. You know what I mean? The main ones. Mm -hmm. You know, last year was 7,000, I think. And, yeah, so, like, I don't know if we contracted with Tada's kids show that for this fair coming up. I don't know about Ken Chi. I don't know if we have yes. the... I'm just waiting on the contract for them. The hypnotist, the hypnotist X throwing. I don't know if we got any of that going no. on. Right. So, you know, obviously that sponsorship form would have to be updated to the current needs of the current fair that's happening for this year. If you did, so that's an ever changing sponsor, but the layout of the sponsorship form, that's that. So the layout, the layout, the layout. Is, is good, I think, and if it needs to be updated, it needs to be updated, but uh, what the package deals are, what they want to sponsor is what we have for entertainment. Were the amounts listed on the first one that was shown 2016 the same as the most recent? I mean, when's the last time that they were raised? I would think with their, you know, do we need to update the packages? I mean, I guess at this point, you know, have Lyrica uh, pull out the most recent ones that you, you're aware of 2020s compared to 2016, see if there's been a cost analysis done. And then if that's the case, then have her, I can work with her to maybe look at some of the market standards and do a minor increase to kind of compensate for today's prices, but also be fair enough to the sponsors too. So we're not breaking them over the poles. So this last year's was on an orange piece of paper that was in a three ring binder. Um, the sponsorships that we had were for the chemistry show, monster truck rise, the uh, balloon artist magic show, next kids show, demolition derby, kinchy pedal pole, and Southwest Polars. This example that I got here was Joan Chevrolet. Uh, did a sponsorship of $500 and they wanted it to go towards the cost of the Wisconsin or of the tractor pull on Saturday night. City utilities gave 500 bucks and they didn't specify where they wanted that to go. Commercial County Bank was $50 and they wanted it to go to the monster truck rides, which got canceled. So we use that money elsewhere. So, yeah. Do we let them know if we have to change? So, for instance, if we had to go from what they had requested, their money goal, we, we don't let them know. I don't know. I think we send the number. That was an internal. That was an internal thing. We think that should be handled. Uh, I don't know one of your Walsh is these hardware. They donated a thousand, but they she went to. You know, a lot of these other people too, they, they
they say, well, I do sponsor a fair. I do help with the fair because I bought a chicken and I bought a, a steer. So. You're correct on that. It's not the same thing, though. Yeah, it's up to you guys or send it back and have the county pick up and then how the county wants to proceed forward with it. Fine. I like I would I would go along with Josh's Josh, Josh's suggestion that um he and Lyrica work work on it, look, look, look at the market and kind of come up with a recommendation for whoever makes if it's this group or if it's the county. That makes the recommendation on how much to increase. Because if I mean we could be here all night, spinning nope. round and round and round, nope. and we now have someone who can do the spinning for us. And some of these lists that were listed up there, like you know, there's County Ambulance Association. I'm sure, you know, that's. In partnership with uh, having the ambulance on standby out there at no cost to the fair as a um, good deed of interdepartmental working, you know. Also, so trucking, we probably put Tim down as a sponsor because he donated some of his equipment. Troxel Farms because of the water. Yeah, the Troxel Farms pays for all of our water out there. Simpsons because of the equipment. A lot of it is in kind yeah. donations, it's not money. But has it power sports there for the UTVs and the ATVs that we use for transport? And then we put their banners up for that. So. Yep. So if I have clarification, we're just going to look at the package prices that they currently stand, look at the market increases, and look at increasing those prices to a fair amount that's done for everybody. And then we'll present it at the next uh, committee meeting, right? If you're going to, if you're going to increase the Prices and that are you going to increase the benefits of that? You know, that like, would be at your recommendation. And what would that be? You know, what would that entail for the benefits? You know, that's yeah. something that that the county's got to come up with as a policy. Like, what do they want? You know, it was harder and harder for a year to like hand out some passes or let people come in for free that don't even they think that they needed to pay. Because if you're if you're taking the stance that you need to raise the prices to match today's standards, mm -hmm. but then you're going to increase the benefits they get back, on yes. then you're just like you've lost. You're right. gonna, you, you haven't gained anything. I guess that's what that sponsorship mean. If the one place wants to give thousand dollars and then cut back our let's say tractor pull by a thousand bucks or somebody paid a thousand bucks, but we want to give twenty fair passes. To let their employees go through. I don't know what the benefit is of what we're saving on cost dollars. When yeah. yeah, and again, I, I I just think you just look at what the package prices are now. You look at what the kind of the market standard. You know, a twenty percent increase from years past. Then you know if that becomes like a too large a dollar, let me cut it in half. Something again, because automatically, just everybody understands these days that prices that went up. It's not going to be the same cheap price for everything. So if you you bring them. Uh, Close enough option of what they were paying, but a little small increase that's tolerable. I think it, it would be it just go right through. So, yeah, Dayton Ridge Runners, ATV, UTV, Snowmobile Club, they uh, they helped out with the serving of the beverages at the meat animal sale, and homesteaders donate equipment for the tractor pull. And so, brought out a skid steer last year, also. So, I mean, they. Just looking through that list, the county sheriff's department puts up seventy percent of it is just people doing things for the fair. Yeah, and it costs money, you know. I have out there, I'm sure. Clay is giving up free time for his deputies to be out there and cost the patrol for us at the fair when it's our responsibility for security. And I think it's a wonderful idea to. Thank them as sponsors, yep. whether it's in kind or monetary. Because we are grateful. You know, the British Veterinary Service is do we pay the veterinarian that we have to have? We, we don't give her any money. So she donates her free time out there, and that should be a cost of what? So that Rich Vet gets a sponsorship. Yes. Partner, whatever. Yeah. Update sponsor letters. But I know like Robin's Nest, they they made a financial contribution. 
Sabinik Aino Nishat. All right, you got enough, Josh, that you go what? No, I'm received and bring it back to the next meeting. Okay. Um, Under sponsors? You reaching out to sponsors? I would. I'd, we want to get some packages up for you to reach out to sponsors. Well, no, I said it, it, there. The next questions are: Are we going to update the letters and then begin reaching and then see begin? Yeah. yeah, I think the letter's got to be updated every year because it's a new fair and you want to make it sound not generic, but you want to tailor it to your fair and theme that you have for this year. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just as a an internal yeah. thing. We will see. Any, any else on your item number 10? Number 11, fairgrounds update. Um, simple with the fairgrounds. Uh, Lyrica has started out there. All of you are aware of that. Uh, Sandy, I gave you that sheet with your updates on there. Uh, if you want to read some of those out loud. Uh, Sandy has spent some time out there and been a big help to her to get her, keep her up and running, and she's been doing a good job. Um, judges, she's getting them organized. She's already got all the non livestock except for one. Uh, the contracts for, and the contracts have been sound, sent out, and she is beginning to receive the contracts back along with their W 9. And then she's waiting for suggestions for animal judges, which usually are meat animal sale and are different species, um, offer suggestions, and then um, she'll go off of that. She's booked a few items like the car show. Every third Thursday, June through September, she will be ordering ribbons and stickers. Um, fair theme, we're trying to come up with one. Um, we'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks. And then the sponsors, um, she had down, but she's got Kylie O'Kane Southwest Tech. What's that about? That I, I'm not aware of. That. Yeah, I don't she's, know what that is. she's got contact. Hey, I don't think it's yeah. wrong. So that's what she's got now. Okay. And then, uh, Going along with like it kind of goes with the park. So we contract out to nature's way for the Port of Johns for like the current stuff. I already had them send me over the contract. Uh, looks like they uh, are one to the total payment for some county fare would be $2,975. I, I would like some time to assess this to maybe see if we need to up the number of Port of Johns that we have available at the fair along with uh, uh, the dumpsters as well. Maybe we go with some larger dumpsters rather than what we had. Uh, like last year, we had kind of an overflow of trash. So we're going to look at those contracts and see if we need to raise the amounts up there. Yeah, but we do have them. So I need to need a reminder here of why we got the dumpsters that we did was because there's financial cuts made that the county made. We had a cut somewhere, and that was to do the size of the dumpsters and the number of port potties. We had operational costs, and we were running thin on operational costs, so that's where we save a little money, I guess, and get smaller stuff in limited amounts. Did we ever do any advertising for like wedding venues and graduation? Yes. Uh, how did that work out? Couple. Okay. Nothing. Well, Couple. Couple. Yeah, right. Couple. She's got yeah. class reunion yeah. coming up out there this summer. Yeah, two days. Summer class reunion. There's one wedding at one park. Yeah. Um, Property park. But we don't have the facilities, really. I mean, that's the thing. We don't, we're not set up to have wedding dances. I mean, if you look at the floors, they're uneven, there's cracks. It's, you know, unless you want to go into one of the barns. And again, not, I mean, some people would. I mean, the, the show barn. The show barn. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it's not ideal for things like that. Carla had brought me out when this whole thing came about of trying to do wedding venues and so on and so forth. And we looked at the current states of the building, you know, what could what buildings could have the appetite for what. And it, it was very quickly realized that you'd have to do some pretty high dollar upgrades, you know, concrete re-leveling the floor, stuff like that, addition of a lot of material before you could ever really put them to good use. So any comments on fairgrounds update or so I have a question, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Was the meeting had? We had discussed potentially having a 
meeting to with the stakeholders for the fair and how did that go? Did we get anywhere with that? Yep, we had a meeting that was out of the campus. Um, they listened, had a lot of questions, some questions I was unable to answer. They want to know the group that we just had there kind of want to know where the what the county is thinking and they kind of want to talk to you, I guess, and sit down and see what's happening here at the county first before they're willing to want to talk further on things. But Scott, do you want to? Ed or Sandy, did you work with her? Yeah. And, you know, I think there's just too many unknowns for a group to step up and just take it over. You know, I mean, just the three insurance utilities and mowing could run 40, 50 grand. I don't know who would, you know, take that on in that group. They all are, you know, it's either kids, full time job, whatever else they do to take that on. That would be a huge ask, I think, from what our feedback was. The group we had there was interested in the fair. But, and that's from Iowa County Ag Society numbers. Was a lot of discussion about the overall maintenance of the ground and stuff like that. Okay, that was is going to be continued to be done by the county with its own forces, like the mowing and the, basically the right away maintenance of things. So mm -hmm. they wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah, that was just the ones that we didn't. These are just numbers, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not knowing at what level. If it's turned over to a group for a buck per year or whatever, what involvement? I think that's Carrie's point to you. What do they expect to take on? Because there was so many unknowns. It's a conversation to have. I think, you know, initially we wanted to gauge if there was even interest, right? If it, if it was even a possibility. Yeah. So, yes, I do I think, think there, there was just so many unknowns. If there's enough interest, then absolutely, I think we should bring them in and sit down and have those conversations and just kind of start that discussion of what could it look like? What would the expectation be on both sides? What do we think is reasonable? What do we think is not reasonable? I think that's fabulous. I think, you know, we spent probably an hour and a half, went over, we wanted to have it an hour and it probably went an hour and a half, but there was so many questions, you know, is this group responsible for um, storage? Is this group responsible for booking the wedding venue? Whatever, and everybody's like, no way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was just to take care of the fair. There was interest there. You know, we didn't know. Yeah. Again, I was going off from what, when I contacted Iowa County, the county just turned it over and this group has got to take care of it. And it's a struggle for them unless, you know what I mean? So a lot of them said that. It could be gradual too. I don't think it could be a, oh, here you go type thing. I think we would have to formulate kind of a plan and benchmark it and gradually you know, well, figure out how it and you would have to show the taxpayers like the county still wants to contribute in some way, shape, or form. It's not just we're dropping this, you guys are on your own, we're not going to offer it anymore. You know, and that was that's how that's some of them took it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it, yeah. I think that was the well, probably mis misunderstanding that I went away with is no one had a clue what the vision of the county was. I think that's the top for the fairgrounds, right yes. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Or the fairgrounds or the fair. Right. Again, we don't know, right? We we just kind of went into anything. It was just an open hash it out. Yeah. It just was a lot of their feedback. What it would it take for them to maybe even have a bite at it? Looks a lot of them said, you know, we don't have time for this. It may not even be the people that we even asked to do that. They said it might have to be other people in the community that would for the fair to. portion, the people we had there. They're interested outside of the fair. I didn't feel any kind of vibe at all, or you know what I mean? Because we didn't know how far to take it, right? Yeah. We didn't know about mowing. Because if is it just going to yeah. get turned over to a group and ag society, and you're responsible for everything? It's like wow. Yeah. Well, never do that. Yeah. So what I saw from other counties, there are variations, right? Mm -hmm. Some they lease it for a dollar, and it's theirs, and they do it all. They get all the revenues from the storage. They get all the, you know. They do it. They have a board and they operate it as such. And a lot of them hire like a full time maintenance slash person to do all of that. Um, some it's, you know, they take it just for that couple of weeks of the fair and they, they schedule the fair, they work the fair, they do all of that. So I think there's a ton of variation out there just depending on what the interest level would be and what people would like to see happen. See, that's what I think you need to draw out your different scenarios. So it's on. 
piece of paper for the people to see. Mm -hmm. So we have this one here where you just explained. You have this one here where you just explained. Yep. Um, we're here to talk and try to get something to where everybody has a goal to what we're trying to achieve here because no one knows. Yep. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, we didn't know. I mean, it was if there's no interest, there's no point in having that discussion, right? So, so now if we know there's interest, I think that's the next logical step is let's sit down and say, all right, well, there's somebody does it like this, some does it like this, or are we going to be a hybrid? Are we going to be something in between? Which could, you know, could we staff it from with a county staff that assists and still have an egg society that does fair? I mean. So again, there's lots of. But you know, then if like the other that should be included in that model is like right now we just discussed sponsorships and, and getting contracts signed. Well, that happens now when the fair is not happening and leading up to the fair. So does that egg society going to take over that and have to meet and figure out what they want for contracts? I think, yeah, they probably would be. Yeah. But then they would take care. They would be on site. For a, a set number of, of days or weeks or whatever, but know that there's all this back as part of the backup, part of the plan for the turnover, I would imagine. And so so eventually, this or is how things are done. Unless we decided to keep a 20 hour a week county employee to assist, you know, in the year round activities that occur and, and all of that too. I mean, you know, there could be. Instead of giving a big giant financial donation, because that's what a lot of these other counties do. They give a substantial financial donation then, and they're just out. And that's what feed offset the staff or the whatever. Well, in this case, you know, I don't know how feasible that is, but maybe a staff member is the way it goes. So again, I think those are things that would shake out in the discussion. Yeah, I would I mean I would think that if you got an ag society to do the fair and a county collected revenue from storage and any other events that might go on in there. And that money then you would think some of that you could donate to the Ag Society to run the fair, right? Yeah. And let them do all the fair stuff. Fair stuff. It also it's, took away that they would do the they didn't want no part of the Ferris wheel. Carnival. They didn't want no part of they wanted to do their yeah they were all big animal they want to have an egg an egg show well that's who you had there though. Yeah, they don't want to remember or am i wrong and say well you're no but like, that's what they, they, were, they were specific to not the business end of it but the sheep the showing, end. The showing end of it i guarantee you though if that was on there i bet you those animal people would get together and they would have what they did up for viola in 2020 and they would do that they would they don't give two craps about that carnival Right and here, we're looking out for every kid that can't show animals or people that are not don't have the ability to to come out and enjoy the fair and see what agriculture is all about. And, and <laughs> carnival is a place to get together and enjoy it. Self, you know, so I can see that's their main focus is that their focus was the animal and the forage. Yeah, yeah that was that's it. The they were specific why they were there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not for to like, have a carnival and enjoy. People from coming in from the outside coming in to have a fun at the fair, enjoy carnival, and eat some food. It was they're, they're high dollar animals to show off and get first place for it so they can get the money. Well, then how do they for scholarships? They, still, they can still have a they can still have an auction. That's their money. Yeah. They don't need a carnival to make one hundred and fifty thousand at the auction. The fair has nothing to do with the yeah. No, so that's what it's all about. Part, so. It's just a half thing. Yeah. Now, this happens that, 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 that the county fair wants to have an animal show. And so that's our animal show. So yeah, we allow their superintendents that he say, hey, you guys, the species, you're knowledgeable. We like to have a show to bring it in for the public to see and it gives the kids an opportunity to work with animals. And so then they kind of coordinate that. But then there's the other aspect where people don't have that ability. There's the foods. Aspect of people bringing up foods and clothing and pictures and the kids making dia dioramas and projects and everything that they can. And that's those are people that aren't having animals and it's adults like us that are canning foods and show it off and they get first place. I don't make the rich get first place. It's right, but it's just but like it's a fun thing to do, you know, and it brings people in to see stuff. Nobody and, knew. Nobody understands that you want a fair. 
Yeah. Well, again, that you have to be part of the dialogue. You know, the vision is not just an animal show. It's this is prepared. Well, we kind of only we kind of only invited them, and then a couple of the foods people. Yeah, yep. we should have invited more, but we didn't. We didn't want to do that right away. Putting the feelers out, I understand yeah. why. Yeah. That makes sense. So now, yeah. if we decide to have a, a another meeting and have mm -hmm. a dialogue, maybe we get more more yeah. stakeholders. Yeah. Right. We need to ask. We just didn't want to go too big because you yeah. can get off with a big group on not knowing yeah. exactly yeah. all the right. details. Yeah. Well, and now so that we've got a little bit of really direction, us. we can be better prepared to have that discussion with a larger group, right? Which is helpful. Mm -hmm. The company we hired, that's not anything they're looking into, is it? That's looking at the campus. No, only the campus and the courthouse and HHS buildings. <laughs> Session in. Anything else on 11 third rounds updates? Keep your agenda items. Is there a need to have keep your agenda items? This is going to be public works on our purview of public works. Oh, well, you'll still meet though. We will. I would like to meet separately. Just if you have an action item that needs to go, any money really is the only thing that needs to go in one. I got the feeling from attorney window that uh, this was this committee was done after. No. In fact, we said fair and parks could meet separately. Okay. If you so choose. All right. Yeah, no, absolutely not. When does that decision take place? When's that discussion? Or is that something we need to put on the next agenda? So when we when we put people, um, assign people to the fair or to the public works committee, um, if there are those that are interested, then I would think I'm sitting on the fair subcommittee as far as board members, that'll be an, a board assignment. And then they'll discuss then who would be members of the subcommittee, which obviously all of you, unless you no longer want to sit on the subcommittee. Is that including any of the citizen members? I thought it was supposed to be all seven. Or the public person. works committee is, oh, but the subcommittee is not made up of those. No. Okay. Yep. Okay. It's just not a main standing or at all. It's only different. Okay. It's still a committee that can meet. Okay. Well, that was my understanding. Citizens. I have not reheard or received so I know nothing. Well, because it's not it's the it's not final yet. The doc, like, so you're done. done. Andy Phillips just got the document done, but we're still talking about then how we're going to assign the committee on committees. Is going to assign board members, and then yeah. So okay. any future agenda items? All right, I'm going to entertain a motion for uh, adjournment. Motion by Gary Manning, seconded by. Hello. Checker. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you all for coming.